Let him do just a phrase of life, and soon you'll find you're losing that crown. A smile will spread all over the town. Don't give in, try and free. Don't be like a passport photograph. Come on and meet Ted Ray, he'll chase your troubles away. And raise a laugh, Ted Ray. Good evening and hello, boys and girls. Well, here we are back again. Before I start, I'd like to scotch a rumor that's been going around about me ever since I've been off the air. I absolutely deny that it was my wife's mother who threw a brick through the window of Broadcasting House. <laughs> yes, folks, I'm the happiest man in London tonight. I've just found a place to park my car. <laughs> oh, you can laugh. In fact, I'm depending on it, but... It isn't... Oh, no, it isn't easy to park a car in these days. And finding a parking space in London is harder than getting a honeymoon couple to buy a television set to pass the evenings away. <laughs> Still, I like London, you know. There's something about London. I, I was down in Whitehall yesterday. Well, I like to be near my money. And uh, I saw a member of the cabinet coming out of the House of Commons. I said, hello, sir. How are things? He said, uh, oh, shocking. I said, go on, what's the trouble? He said, uh, same old thing, steal. I said, steal? What's up? He said, Derby County won't let him go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. Uh, a lot of people here from Derby. Well, of course, I, uh, I do get around quite a bit. I went into the British Museum this morning to try and pick up a few gags, and there was a workman in there. He was, no, oh, don't bother with those now. There was a workman in there putting the finishing touches to a wooden statue of Shakespeare. He was just nailing the nameplate at the feet when the hammer slipped and he hit his thumb. Well, the language, honestly... Well, I, I used to be a bit of a ventriloquist, you know, so uh, I threw my voice as if it came from the wooden statue and said, Thou art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. <laughs> well, this bloke with the hammer, he nearly passed out. He said to me, Here, Gov, do you wear that? I said, Yes, old Shakespeare doesn't seem to like that sort of language. He said, I can't understand it. On Monday, when I shoved the six-inch nail through his ear, the old tongue me bowled it out, so he never said a flaming word. <laughs> <laughs> of course, while my wife's been away, I've, I've been eating out, you know. I've been going to uh, one little restaurant where they've just brought over a new head waiter from Paris, one Alfonso. And what a difference he's made to the place. <coughs> First night he arrived, he was inspecting the kitchen when he saw two chefs carrying a steaming pot. He said that, just a moment, please. I would like to taste that. One of the chefs said, taste it. You don't want to bother about that. He said, please, everything must be tasted by me, a person alley. So he got a spoon, ladled some out, sipped it and said, ah, exquisite, serve it. The chef said, serve it? Who's going to chuck it away? It's to wash it up water. See you later, folks. <laughs> We 
Charleston from South Carolina. It's the Charleston from South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, boys and bells. Next week, the boys and girls will sing a little song entitled Don't Send Me a Pair of Earmuffs, Mother. That's not where I'm cold. Thank you very much. <laughs> Holidays. Wonderful. But like all good things, they must come to an end. Last Saturday, Kitty and I had packed our bags, ready to leave for home. But Mrs. Carruthers, the landlady, insisted that we had a farewell meal to see us on our way. It's no use, Kitty. I tell you, I can't eat it. The one thing I can't stand, pigeon pie. Oh, but darling, pigeon's very nice. Yes, pigeon's very nice in its place. <laughs> well, where's that? In Trafalgar Square with the rest of the bombers. <laughs> well, mind you, pigeon disagrees with mother. They wouldn't dare. <laughs> well, darling, what are you going to do? There's only one thing for it, darling. What? I'll wrap it up and throw it out of the carriage window on the way home. Oh. It's been done before, you know. Well, all right, Ted. Well, I'll just go and say goodbye to Mrs. Carruthers. All right. Well, you know how it is. Once your holiday finishes, you just can't get home quickly enough. And Kitty and I, we're really delighted to see the dear little house there once again. Well, darling, home. There it is. Yes, darling, there it is. The third mortgage on the left. <laughs> Oh, Chad. Uh, yeah? Isn't it nice to get home? Oh, wonderful, darling. Home. The one place where you can scratch any place that itches. <laughs> well, here we are. I just can't wait to get inside. Uh, and you know what I can't wait for? What? A nice cup of tea. Mm -hmm. That's one thing the Carruthers couldn't make like you. Well, thank you, Daniel. I say, you never put three tea leaves in a pot and chase them around with a spoon. <laughs> Well, let's get inside, and I'll show you how it's done. Oh, Ted. What's wrong, Ducky? Well, the milkman hasn't left any milk. No milk? Uh -huh. Oh, but Kitty, if there's one thing I like worse than cold pigeon, it's tea without milk. Well, I'm sorry, darling. I said I'd send him a postcard to say we'd be back, and I guess I forgot. Forgot. There goes my cup of tea. I've waited for that tea. <laughs> Suffered and sacrificed. I had the chance of a sip out of the top of a vacuum flask in the train, but I refused. <laughs> When I passed the refreshment room, I turned my head and looked the other way. For what? To find that you've forgotten to order the milk. You've arrived home, haven't you, darling? Hmm? Well, I'm sorry I forgot the milk, Ted. So just get your key out, dear, and let us in before people start drawing their curtains back. Key? You know, for the door. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's on my key ring. Well, then get it. I can't reach the kitchen mantelpiece in the front door. <laughs> Oh, no. You left it on the mantelpiece? Well, why didn't you take it away with you? I didn't think we'd need the mantelpiece at Brighton, dear. <laughs> now, Ted, don't be silly. Suppose a burglar had broken in. There was your key all ready for it. Darling. <laughs> Darling. What? Sweet one. <coughs> if a burglar had broken in, he wouldn't need the key. Get that? Oh, yes. So get your key. Oh, that. Well, then. Yes. Yeah. It's in my bag at the bottom of the suitcase with all the dirty linen. Fine thing. Now we show all our dirty linen in public. <laughs> Ted Ray, don't you dare open that case in the street. I'll open the case anywhere I like. Oh, all this because you left your key on the mantelpiece. Now do something. You've arrived home too, haven't you, darling? Yes. Yeah. Well, I could get a ladder from the garage. Well, then why don't you? Because the key to the garage is on my key ring on the mantelpiece. <laughs> Oh, then I suppose I'd better start unpacking this suitcase. Pajamas, skirts, stockings. Hmm. I didn't know you wore these, dear. <laughs> Ted. Ted, please, stop holding them up for everyone to see. Kitty, look at the color, pink and orange. That's a lovely combination. <laughs> Will you please give me my key? All right, darling, here it is. All right. Oh, that's funny. Mm, not funny. I can't open the door. Uh, I expect the paint's stuck. Let me try. Right. That's it. There we are. No wonder. Well, we'll... We'll have plenty to read for the next few days anyway. Why, darling? There's two weeks' daily papers behind the door. 
What a woman. Forgot to cancel the papers and forgot to order the milk. Uh, Come on, let's get in the kitchen. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Welcome home, both of you. Oh, it's you, Rumble Tummy. Where have you been? Oh, Teddy boy, I've been a fortnight on the land lifting potatoes. With your appetite, I should have thought you'd have gone to Cheddar Gorge. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you get in? Oh, I came in through the back window. The Higgins family gave me a leg up. All the Higgins family? Well, all except the baby. He can't walk yet. <laughs> well, perhaps the Higgins family will know how I feel. I've been supporting you for years. <laughs> oh, don't talk to me like that, Teddy boy. I'll just put the kettle on for a cup of tea for you. That's a lot of use. Your clever sister's forgotten to water the milk. Oh, that's all right, Teddy. I went and got half a bottle from Mrs. Higgins. You did? Oh, I could kiss you for that, Nelson. You could? Yeah. <laughs> Only my name's not Hardy. <laughs> now, don't keep on at him, Ted. Well, I'm doing my best. You're never satisfied. Yes, yeah, well, never mind, Nelson. We've brought you something back from Brighton. Oh, you have? Goody, goody, goody. Oh, oh I am excited. Yeah, I've got a present, Teddy boy. If you don't keep your hands off that case, you won't even have a future. <laughs> Well, here it is, Nelson. You open it while I make the tea. Oh, thanks, Kitty. Oh, it feels lovely. What is it? Well, it's something to wear. Mm. Teddy, mm. why do I wear this? It's a pigeon. Pigeon? pigeon? <laughs> yes, and by the look of it, it's at it. It's a pigeon. It's a pigeon. Uh, you know what's happened, Kitty? Yes, darling. <laughs> we threw Nelson's present out of the window. Yes, it's great. <laughs> This is Bob and Alf Pearson. Oh, Brother Alf. Yes, Brother Bob. That tune denotes it's time to do our act. Eleven weeks have passed away since we sang for Mr. Ray. The time flies quickly by. Yes, that's a fact. Yes, that's a fact. What, what shall we sing? Ah, that's the thing. The old or new, it's all part of our job. Let's take a song that's old and sweet. Then to make the theme complete. We'll sing a new one, Brother Al. Yes, positively, Brother Bob. So here's the old and sweet. By the light of the silvery moon, I want to spoon to my honey I'll croon love's tune. Honey moon, keep a shining in June. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams. We'll be cuddling soon by the silvery moon. And now the new which tells the same story, but in a slightly different way. I don't care if the sun don't shine. I get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my baby. It's no fun with the sun around, but I get going when the sun goes down and I meet my baby. That's when we kiss and kiss and kiss and then we kiss some more. Don't ask how many times we kiss with the moon above. Who keeps score? I don't care if the sun don't shine. I get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my little baby. That's when we kiss and kiss and kiss and then we kiss some more. Don't ask how many times we kiss with the moon above. Who keeps score? I don't care if the sun don't shine. I get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my baby. Or oh, with the silvery moon up in the sky. I'm such a lucky guy when I'm with my baby.
You remember George, the man with the conscience? He works for the Daily Bugle, or rather he did, until that fatal day when he had an awful row with his boss. You see, Mr. Rivers said something that George didn't like. Get out! You're fired! So, having been fired, he had a brilliant idea. He opened the Cannon Private Inquiry Office. Assignments undertaken, missing relatives found, light carting done. So here he is, the average man, the man with a conscience. Good morning, Miss Dobbs. You're here early. Oh, there you go again, calling me Miss Dobbs. Why don't you call me by my first name? Oh, very well, Gertrude. Now, just call me Gert and leave out the rude part. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, look here. Have there been any telephone names? Oh, look. I've never noticed before. What? Haven't you got lovely eyes? Now, listen. I said to my mum last night, I said, that Georgie's got lovely eyes, and they, they match. <laughs> now, see here, Gertrude, uh, Miss Dobbs. Oh, now you're getting angry, and I love you when you're angry, George. <laughs> Your nostrils goes in and out. Now, listen, none of your hanky-panky. I hired you as a secretary, didn't I? Yes, George. Well... Are you good at shorthand? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right, then take a letter. To uh, Messrs. Cohen, 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 and Murphy. Oh, that's nice. What's nice? Well, we should be grateful for small Murphy. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Now then, dear Mr. Cohen, in answer to yours of the fifth alt... Yes? We note that you report the theft of a rice pudding in a mahogany case from a British restaurant in Golders Green. We have referred this matter to Mr. Cummings. Yes. We have done our best, Mr. Cohen. Yes. But this does not seem to be good enough for you, Mr. Cohen. No. What? Yes. And we've come to the conclusion that you don't know whether you're coming or Cohen. They're blue, aren't they? What? Your eyes. <laughs> Never mind my eyes. Read that back. Read it back? Yes. Oh, I can't read it back. No, when they taught reading back, I was on my holiday. <laughs> Hello? Cannon Agency here? What? No. When? Got any clues? Yes. I'll be over right away. That was the Dowager Duchess of Dillwater. Thieves have broken into her country seat and got away with a valuable oil painting. <laughs> I'm going over there right away. Oh, can I? with you, Joel. No, no, you can't. You stay here and look after the office. Oh, all right, but I'll be here when you come back. Love will find a way. <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> oh, conscience. Yes, George? Here we are at the station. Don't you think this is a marvellous disguise? Now, look at you. Cycle clips, a false moustache and a deer stalker cat. You look more like an undertaker's runner. I might have expected that from you. The train now standing at number three platform is for Powderham, Dustham, and Telcom. <laughs> Change at Nappies for Dillwater. That's my train. Move you back. Who's he talking about, Chelsea? I'll, uh, I'll get in this carriage. Ah, oh, here we are. The carriage is empty, except for a boy in an Eton jacket. Here's a nice corner seat. Hi, top me, you. Hat on my top hat. Ah. Oh, come, come now, my boy. That's nothing to cry about. It's not that, top me. I'm crying because my holidays are over. Holidays, eh? Where did you go? Paris. The city of love. <laughs> Did you like it? Oh, not half. Especially the Follies Burger. <laughs> I, uh... I shouldn't think a boy like you would see much in that. Oh, didn't I? I sat on the front row of the balcony with a telescope. <laughs> you did? Yes, yes. There were six of us. Yes? The Smith Miner, Jones Major, three of us and me. Was it a good show? Oh, smashing. Yeah. A fella come on and sang a song all about a pub. What was that? Surely, Pont, I'm having one. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then? Well, then uh, 
Then came Les Girls. Les Girls? Yes. yes. In dances through the ages. Lovely. Yes. yes. Jones Major had a telescope for the dance of the five swans. Yes. Yes, and Inky Robinson had the telescope for the dance of the six daffodils. Go on, go on. And, and, and my turn was for the dance of the seven vows. Yes, yes. And then it happened. What? Smith Marner fell over the balcony <laughs> with a telescope. <laughs> Hey, uh, Conscience, the train's, the train's slowing down. Get out, all those who want Dillwater. <laughs> he takes us for a lot of suckers. Well, never mind that, you keep your mind on your job. Uh, I'd better ring Dillwater Towers. Oh, dash, I've only got a sixpence. Well, if you want some change, ask that man over there eating the pig's trotter. Oh, yes. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, could you spare me a couple of coppers? Hey, did you hear that, Martha? This young fella's begging for money. By Gorman, he seems so respectable and all. He don't be hard. <laughs> we know what it is to be without. Hey, <laughs> we haven't always had it. No, but we've got it now with plenty. <laughs> now, just a moment. He's clever as my Helbert. Do you know how he made his money? No, how? Shall I tell him, Martha? Ah, go on, Halbert. Well, lad, you know them greyhound tracks where the people put the money on dogs? Yes. Well, our Halbert put his money on the rabbit. <laughs> Look, all I want is tuppence for a... For a cup of tea, aye. Hey, open your bag, Martha, and give him five quid. Now, just a minute, you two. I don't want charity. All I wanted was tuppence for the phone. And all you do is insult me. Don't you speak to my Albert like that. He's a gentleman, is Albert. He's one of nature's. Oh, this is hopeless. Hopeless. I must get to Dillwater Towers and the station's deserted. Everyone's gone. Except me. <laughs> Hello. Why, it's a little girl. What's your name? Jennifer. That's a nice name. Yes, and it's my birthday. Well, that's lovely. Many happy returns, Jennifer. Have you had any presents? You should be the first. <laughs> But, uh, but, Jennifer, somebody must have given you something. My daddy gave me a ten shilling note. Oh. He, he knows he's my daddy and all his hair's coming out. It is? Yes, I think my mother had a hand in it. <laughs> yes. Yes, no doubt. But uh, what are you going to do with your ten shilling note? Well, first I go to the refreshment room and change it into silver. Yes. And then I go to the booking office and change the silver into coppers. I see. And then I go to the sweet shop and change the coppers into silver. Go on. And then I go back to the refreshment room and change the silver back into a ten shilling note. And then I uh, get... just, 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 just a minute, Jennifer. What's the idea of changing it all the time? I can't see any sense in that. Well, sooner or later, somebody's going to make a mistake. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, dear. Well, here we are, Conscience. Dillwater Towers. And I'm three hours late. I am unlucky. Unlucky? What about Rovers? Well, what about them? Last Saturday afternoon, Joe Cheatham sent it forward. Yes? Five minutes to go, open goal. Go on. Goalkeeper lying unconscious on ground. Yes? Kick ball right over flipping stand. <laughs> Unlucky, you don't know you're born. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the estate of the Dowager Duchess of Dillwater. Now to find out about the missing oil painting, I'll ring the bell. Yeah, you don't pull that bell so hard. You've knocked the cook off the sofa twice. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, good morning. Do you work here? Of course. I'm butling. Ask him to pee the other armor. <laughs> quiet, conscience, quiet. What's going on here? Now, look here, you. I've called to see Mrs. Dillwater. Mrs. Dillwater? Say your grace. What is it, Grant? <laughs> is, your, is your name Grunt? Yes, she treats me like a pig. Oh, now don't grumble, Grunt. <laughs> I think it's a parcel from the agency, Your Grace. Oh, come in, dear boy. Uh, good afternoon, Duchess. No, don't call me Duchess, but call me Dolly. Mm? Does the Duke call you Dolly? Not anymore. I buried him. <laughs> 
Really? Yes, I had to. He was dead. <laughs> well, uh, now look here. You're very sad. I'm, uh, I'm from the Cannon Agency. The Cannon? Yes. Well, move over, darling, and you can cannon off the cush. <laughs> That's your grace. Mm, darling. Darling. Mm. When I first met the Duke, I was the Gaiety girl. I bet you were the gayest one there. Mm, I was. And even now, look at my ankles. Aren't they pretty? Hmm? Uh, yes, yes, they are. And what about these calves? Hmm? Mm, 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 mm. And look at these dimpled knees. Uh, quite, quite, quite. That'll do for me. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but it would never have done for the Duke. Well, uh, I think I'll take a look in the music room. Very well. Get busy, or my hand will give you a hiding across your bark. <laughs> oh, conscience. I've looked all over this old house, but I haven't found a clue. What about that door over there? That's one room you haven't looked in. Good idea. I'll go in. Oh, oh. it was terrible, Ivy. It was agony. I've never known such a thing in all my life. <laughs> what happened, Mrs. Oskin? <laughs> <laughs> I was in bed, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and my legs were all black. Hey, <laughs> what did you do, Mrs. Oskin? <laughs> I, I got your cousin Charlie up. Oh, he's no good. I've been out with him. <laughs> I got your aunt Ada up. What did she do? She put the kettle on and made a cup of tea. Oh, did that shift it? No. I was going through it, Ivy. So I got Dad up. Oh, Dad. What did he do, Mrs. Austin? He, he took one look at me black legs, and then he sent for Dr. Hardcastle. Young Dr. Hardcastle. He's lovely, Mrs. Austin. He's lovely. <laughs> He came right, he came right away, Ivy, yes. and my legs were still black. Oh. oh, and then he did it. What did he do, Mrs. Austin? He, he took me stockings off and we all went back to bed. <laughs> Good gracious. Well, what was all that about? What's all that nonsense about? Oh, pardon me, sir. What is it, Grunt? It's about the Hoyle trains in, sir. Would you come down to the kitchen? Oh, all right. Yeah. My favourite armchair had an hole in the seat, and I was getting the wind up, wasn't I, Sidney? Yes. So, so you went into the library with a razor blade and cut out the oil painting of the Admiral, didn't you, Sidney? Yes. Then you brought it down here and patched up my seat with it, didn't you, Sidney? Yes, yes. I heard that. Grunt? Yes, sir. Send for Her Grace. Go up. Call Her Grace. Go up. <laughs> Well, what is it? Madam, I've solved the mystery of your uncle's portrait. You have, you dear boy. Yes, there's the Admiral in the seat of that chair. Oh, dear. What a calm down for me. Yes, and what a calm down for him. Now he's only a rear Admiral. <laughs> well, that's all for this week, boys and girls. How that old clock does go round. We'll be with you again, though, next week. When once more, we'll help you to... Raise the love, raise the love. Don't be like a passport for the ground. Gloomy days soon will pass. Come on, folks, raise up your glass. And raise the love. been listening to Ted Ray in Ray's a Laugh with Kitty Blewett, Fred Yule, Peter Sellers, Patricia Hayes, Leslie Perrins, Bob and Alf Pearson, and the Bows and the Bells. The dance orchestra was conducted by Stanley Black, and the program was written by Eddie McGuire and Ted Ray. Additional material by George Watt. Production by George Ince.